Welcome to the Divine Fellowship. A couple things, real quick. Um, the, uh, Paula, was, yeah, Paula was not here last Sunday. Um, Fred left and um, went over to see if she was okay, and she had passed in the night. So, um, had a heart attack. So, uh, huh? It was a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, apparently so. Um, so she will be missed, and um, there'll be, the services will be maybe sometime late April, early May, something like that, when the family has a chance to do things. They live in California, so. Um, and, but the, the other thing that's like really, really important is the chickens are back. <laughs> Eggs, so just, and they're colorful as always. So eggs available, yay. And on the calendar, of course, we have Shigong every Sunday, as long as the video's working and, and Marianne's here and everything's cool. Uh, the emotion code tomorrow, uh, essential oils on Tuesday. I assume Cindy's doing those still. Uh, Shigong for longevity. Uh, Marianne will be doing that on Wednesday. Uh, Friday the 13th, woohoo! <laughs> and then there's a Reiki class on Saturday uh, with Amber Mitchell. So if you're interested in something about that. And thank you for that. And oneness blessing. Uh, we had it, of course, before and after. And it will be a non hands on oneness blessing just to address all of the issues. And as I said last Sunday, um, you know, we have had all kinds of requests for different information on what we're going to do about services, uh, considering the, the virus and everything. And at this time, the only thing we're going to be doing different is we are going to be a little bit more careful with communion. Uh, we'll be passing the hand sanitizer around. We're trying to do arm bumps or foot gizmo thingies instead of big hugs, but we can still, still do the big hugs. I commend this young lady right here for wearing the, mat, wearing the mask. Because she needs to. She needs to. And this is all about prudence um, and being prudent. Because guess what? Fear compromises the immune system. Yes. So stop it! <laughs> stop! <laughs> the media actually... <laughs> the media this time is actually doing an, an amazing job of keeping people informed and uh, hyping them up, I guess. I don't know. It's, I mean, yes. It is a little bit more severe. Uh, you just want to talk about signs? After church. Okay. Come see me. Oh, okay. We have the Healing Light Expo uh, uh, magnetic signs that go on the side of vehicles. So if you want to have one, you know, um, come by afterwards. and Nancy will give one to you so we can get the advertising out there. And thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Vanna. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. So. To, to, and I'll probably do this a little bit on Sundays just to try to calm people because seriously, the immune system is compromised when you're fearful. Should you be careful? Yeah, like anything during flu season. This is a form of a flu or a cold. I mean, depends on who you want to talk to over the, the coronavirus is a form of a cold. If you have sneezes and sniffles, doesn't mean you have it. If you have sneezes and sniffles and a fever, and you have trouble breathing, you might want to think about doing something about that. Hard to say. Does it mean you go to the doctor? Well, maybe go to the doctor. Don't go to ER. I mean, it, mean, it doesn't mean you're going to die. I mean, if you get sick, it doesn't mean you're going to die. Um, you know, if, if you have health issues and you're old like us, like some of us, yeah, you know, be careful. Just be prudent with the whole thing. I mean, we lost uh, just this year almost 20,000 people in this country just from the regular flu. Yeah. So, and nobody hears about that. Yeah. So just be careful. Do the right things. Um, don't pay quite so much attention to the media, maybe. They're just doing an amazing job this year of hyping that. Because guess what? When the swine flu hit, yeah. you didn't have this kind of panic. No. And it was every bit as bad. And so. Stars. Yeah, and SARS and the H1N1 is, is uh, the swine flu. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, t-shirts, sweatshirts that you might want to get. Um, it clearly states princess on my birth certificate. I did that one. Which one? Written? Oh, I remember. I did those last week. Oh, here's one. Caution. Prone to sudden outbursts of song. 
Yeah, that'd be me. So, all right, this was uh, Halloween uh, when these were obviously around. Um, it <laughs> obviously it's a um, a dachshund with a with a sheet on it or something that says Happy Halloweener. <laughs> And a ghost with a mug says, I'm just here for the booze. <laughs> and a big black hat, you know, and it says, uh, some days you just have to put on the hat and remind them uh, what they're dealing with. That's right. That's right. So, and then OHD, obsessive Halloween disorder. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of gourds, okay. Uh, oh my gourd, I love fall. <laughs> Cute, cute, cute. And we do have a couple patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. So, and John said, your inside is out and your outside is in. I still don't really know what that means. <laughs> and no one's enlightening me either, so they don't either. So, but I've always seen that. So it sounds good. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And George, um, uh, okay. Um, Jimmy said it was okay for me to say this one. So, the Golden Gate Bridge should have a long bungee cord for people who aren't ready to commit suicide but really want a little practice. <laughs> See? I know. I thought it was, ooh, ee, ah. I thought it was funny, but... <laughs> I probably should have asked somebody other than Jimmy, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. So he had binoculars? No. no okay. so, uh, things that make you go, hmm. Take time to deliberate. Deliberate. <laughs> but when the time for action arrives, stop thinking and go in. No one is more, li more liable to make mistakes than the man who acts only on reflection. Hmm. We're drowning in information and starving for knowledge. Rutherford D. Rogers, 1915. So, all right. And a little learning is a dangerous thing. Love me, love my dog. Uh, he's a fool that makes his doctor his heir. Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, British merchant Peter Duran came up with the idea of canned food in 1810, but the can opener wasn't invented until 48 years later. Hmm. Before Ezra B. Warner patented the first can opener in 1858, cans were opened with a hammer and a chisel. Uh, been there, done that. You ever gone camping? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know how to do that. In the Western movies, they always showed them using the knife. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I've done that. I have done that. Uh, thank God for church bulletin bloopers and people with typewriters that didn't work real well. Bertha Belch, a missionary from Africa, will be speaking tonight at the Calvary Methodist. Come here, Bertha Belch, all the way from Africa. <laughs> The fasting and prayer conference includes meals. <laughs> the sermon this morning, Jesus walks on water. The sermon tonight, search for Jesus. <laughs> Our youth basketball team is back in action Wednesday at 8 p.m. in the recreation hall. Come on and watch us kill Christ the King. <laughs> Ladies, don't forget the rummage sale. It's a chance to get rid of those things not worth keeping around the house. Don't forget your husbands. <laughs> All right. Uh, a man was riding his Harley along a California beach when suddenly the sky clouded above his head and in a booming voice the Lord said, because you have tried to be faithful to me in all ways, I will grant you one wish. The biker pulled over and said, hmm, build me a bridge to Hawaii so I can ride over any time I want. The Lord said, your request is materialistic. Think of the enormous challenges for that kind of undertaking. The supports uh, required reaching to the bottom of the Pacific and the concrete and steel would take, w it would take. It would nearly exhaust several natural resources. I can do it, but it's hard for me to justify your desire for worldly things. Take a little more time and think of something that could possibly help mankind. 
The biker thought about it for a long time. Finally, he said, Lord, I wish that all, uh, that all men could understand women. I want to know how she feels inside, what she's thinking when she gives me the silent treatment, why she cries, what she means when she says nothing's wrong, and how I can make a woman truly happy. The Lord replied, you want that bridge of two lanes or four? <laughs> so there. <laughs> And hopefully this will be all straight this morning because Jimmy just straightened it. Uh, Assuming we went the right direction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. And I actually... Guys. I'm going to have to fix my microphone. Hold on. Stop that. Phil turned it, so now it's not working right. <laughs> We're going to practice safe microphone. <clears throat> Just because. It's gooey. Okay. <laughs> My wife turned that down. This is called Prayer for Healing. Heal my wounded heart, Divine One. Clear away betrayal and loss and grant me comfort. Heal my troublesome thoughts, Divine One. Release me from worry and fear and grant me peace. Heal my damaged soul, Divine One. Bring forgiveness and grant me grace. Heal my body, Divine One. Restore my health and free me from suffering. Help me to see a way to clarity and healing. May it be so. And the gratitude? I am truly grateful for healing energy coming to me now. from the Ancient Ones, point of center. As you awaken to the unfolding of your journey today and each day, we encourage you to come from a place of center. Each day you may have a list of things you wish to accomplish, and this is good. And yet the greatest accomplishments come from a point of center. Point of center is the place where mind and heart and spirit meet, join, and create. How you can decide to do a thing, yet without your heart being in it and your spirit willing, nothing will happen. So too, if you want something to happen, yet don't have a plan, nothing happens either. How do you find a place of center? In one word, relax. The state of relaxation, or ease, allows all of you to come online energetically and function together. How do you find this sense of ease? In two words, let go. Can you observe the sunset without having to make it different? That's letting go. How can can you notice the breath in your lungs and not need to change it? That is being at ease. This at ease state of being is not being unconscious or oblivious. Rather, it is an awakened state of awareness without pressure, expectation, or urgency. Moving into this state of awareness with ease brings you into the center and all aspects of your creative self will come online. It is from this place of center that we inspire you, guide you, and cause things to happen for your benefit more easily. Allow us to assist you. So Jenny um, has been a board member for how long? How long have you been on our board? A couple of years? More than a couple of months. Yeah, <laughs> a while, a while. And she's stepping down for health reasons. So <clears throat> we have a very special plaque we would like to give to you. The special thanks to Jenny Jenkins for her years of service as a member of the Board of Trustees. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
She has a place to hang it off. Hugs, hugs. And we like to elbow fists, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Body flailings, whatever. And we'd like to introduce to you uh, a new board member that's taking her place. So Allie, if you would kindly step forward. <coughs> this is Allie Hansen. She's going to step into that same place of. You know, she's our youngest ever board member. Yes, she'll bring a new perspective, I'm sure. Yep. We expect it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's give her a good divor Divine Fellowship welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Elbow. Elbow. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works, Phil. <laughs> but whatever. So <clears throat> I've had a creeping crud. <sighs> Getting over the creeping crud, which is why we're being very, very careful with hand sanitizers and things. Um, so last night I was laying in bed going, I don't know if I'm going to show up for church or not. not don't know if I'm going to be able to speak or not. <clears throat> in case I do, I would really like an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> and after a whole week of not being able to think, have you ever tried to think through snot? No, it doesn't work. <laughs> so <clears throat> having all this insight, it was like so exciting. Because what in the, in the alternative, if I couldn't have spoken, I was going to have Phil run that little excerpt of the Ascension Orb that I had done a few weeks ago for us to talk about. Um, so let me just refresh your memory of that, that we have been gifted with a new energetic structure within our form, our physical form. And it exists within the ethereal realm, so it doesn't take up any space in your body. But where it exists in the ethereal realms is you have your diaphragm and your stomach and then your spine. So it's between your stomach, the back of your stomach and your spine. And it's about this big around, it's an orb. And it's just energy and it spins like a, a gyroscope, it just spins. And it allows you to get centered, balanced, and um, strengthened. It's just powerful. How many people have access there so far since we talked about it? And what is your experience of that so far? Feels really good, doesn't it? You, you stand taller, you feel more centered, you feel more balanced. So what's ever going on in your world around you, you're going to come back to center more easily, more quickly, and more powerfully. Um, so I have new information I want to share with you about that. But before I share that, um, we're going to have Beth come up. I'll, she has had some experiences that I would like her to share with you. And if you would do the honors of just wiping that off and throwing it away. And And turning it on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I've had an experience with the Ascension Orb, and Janice asked me to share that with you. And as a backdrop, um, I think I maybe mentioned this before, in the end of December, um, Janice shared some Ancient Ones um, teachings, and they were about creation. And uh, they talked about our ability to create a life that's in alignment with our life purpose. And when I read those, they really spoke to my heart and I said, I want that, help me. And so since then, I have just been gifted with all these insights and tools to help me create a life in alignment with my life purpose. And it's been huge, it's really changing me quite a bit and I'm going to share um, this particular one. I was working on a home project. We have a family room that um, the kids used. Our kids are gone and now it, it just kind of turned into a just a place in our house that wasn't being used and wasn't being loved very much. And I said, okay, it's time to 
you know, have the adult version of our family room. And I just wasn't getting there. I wasn't getting the resources, you know, the money, the everything together to do that. And I said, okay, it's time to start manifesting tools. And we all know those manifesting tools where you sit down and you visualize that nice new couch and that nice new whatever. And every time I sat down to visualize, I was getting distracted. And distracted is an intuitive tool, is it not? You know, when you can't, when you can't focus on something, I wasn't getting there. And I'm like, okay, what is it I really want? And, I, and it really, and I just kept on stripping away and letting go, almost in a Sedona method type way. I just said, no, I just let go. And finally I got, I want a room that's just warm and welcoming. And I just got to that. And when I got to that truth, I just suddenly felt myself vibrating in with my ascension orb. I started connecting in with it because that vision that I was seeing suddenly was in harmony and I just felt it glow and get stronger and stronger and it was, it's almost hard to put it into words but it was a very powerful experience with me. And within that spot, I felt like a spiral coming out from me and it was magnetic, and it was swirling around me, and I could feel that that magnetic spiral around me was attracting things that would be in harmony with that, that vision. And so I started going back, those feelings that I wanted for that room, and so I started going back and visioning again what I wanted for that room, and I started getting irks, you know, where things don't flow. Okay, there's that beautiful, you know, $1,200 sofa. Irk. <laughs> Irk. <laughs> and then I'd pause, and I'd let it dissolve. And I, in that space, I had that warm and welcoming, and I realized that $1,200 sofa was not in alignment with what I wanted for the room. And I also had the insight that it wasn't in alignment because Actually, that was the favorite place that the kids had to sleep. And when they come visit, they all still say, I love that, you know, want to sleep in the bed? No, I want to sleep on the couch, right? <laughs> so it wasn't just a monetary thing. It was an energetic thing that that sofa still belonged in that room. And so I just did that over and over. And I felt that irk. And then I'd pause. And it's like I'd let it go. And then, and then other times I had an action. And, or, and, I, and I would just keep on intuitively asking, is there something for me to do now? Is there something for me to know? And I just kept on getting all this information and all this energy. And so I was able to go quickly into the room and with probably $10 worth of nuke storage containers um, and moving a couple pieces of furniture and an hour or two of deep cleaning, that room had transformed. <laughs> but it was in that visioning process, being connected in with my orb, that I was able to have that clarity. And not only that, it's just a joy and energy of doing that. Does that make, does yes. that make sense what I'm talking yes. about? OK. <laughs> it, it, for me, I'm a kinesthetic, so I feel things, so I don't always verbalize it right. But it was, it was a very powerful um, um, tool for for me to be able to use and when you're in that alignment with that energy that high energy of the ascension orb um, you that's a very intuitive place to be and you get really clear guidance as to where to go what to do and I've used it over and over and over and one thing um, uh, two things I want to uh, say with this is it's the ancient ones talked about creation not manifesting. And it could be just about words, but for me, I've heard that word manifesting so often, to me it almost generates a feeling of you don't have it. And they say, well, visualize it like you do have it, but that's still saying you don't have it. Creation energy is you're creating it. And so that's the second part of it. As soon as I created that energy for that particular room. I had it. After that, I was just attracting things into my life or taking things out of that room that didn't fit with that energy. So I had it. And do you get how powerful yeah. that is? OK. <laughs> I'm really excited about this, because for me, it was a real paradigm shift. And so I using that tool all the time, and um, 
and want me to okay walk through and with them and just show yes please. just quickly I'll just show you how to get into that space now um, and you may remember this just from a meditation I did a few weeks ago which was part of what the ancient ones kind of gifted with me but I just start with that smile on my face and then I just say I am a being of light I can't help but shine just you know kind of say that to yourself I'm a being of light I can't help but shine and just feel the gratitude with that just exhale anything that doesn't serve you and now connect in with your ascension orb it's already there it's already there just become aware of your ascension orb thank you and be aware of how that connects with that light within you you know for me it made that light within me stronger and sturdier but it also the light within me um, illuminates the ascension orb they work together and it's in that spot that you can start working with your manifesting or with your creating you know you think about what it is you really really want and and you will feel when it's in harmony with that feeling inside so that's how I use that tool so I just start with what I call my saging smiling affirmation you know I'm a being of light gratitude and just exhaling and then I connect with the ascension orb and start creating from there and with that Beth let's the other aspect of the ascension orb is can you hear me okay yeah. is that you when we connect our ascension orb with other people's ascension orbs then we amplify yes that expression of solidarity that expression of uh, strength and balance it's about coming into spiritual balance in the physical form so and we can create as a group yes even for even more so yes um, and it's not about the manifesting as in forcing something to happen by a sheer will, but it's that creative energy by which things cannot help but be there for us. It's We've, powerful, beautiful, it's sweet, created. gentle It is energy. there, yes. and we're just attracting things consistent with that. So, so with that in mind, notice her ascension orb, notice my ascension orb, and connect in with both of us. And all that, all that is is that your ascension orb is going, oh, yeah, I see you. Remember the Avatar movie, I see you. That's, it's just that acknowledgement, just acknowledging that energy. And that amplifies this connection. Now, this is no way going to download any of my personal issues for you. This is not that kind of attachments. It's not that kind of creating strings or or uh, connections that are harmful. This is just you having your ascension orb in harmony with every other ascension orb out there, and then you're blessed. And that energy is amplified and blessed within you. And, and as you energetically allow that to shine within your energy field, you're stronger and other people around you are stronger. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. And you know, for me, do this when you're feeling turbulent, <laughs> you know, and you can connect in with it. You know, you've described that ascension orb as a gyroscope. Right. And that's a very powerful image because um, uh, airplanes, as I understand it, use gyroscopes for their navigation system. So if they get in a, you know, plane, in a, in a storm or whatever, no matter which way is that, the gyroscope sets them. And so that's a visual for me that when I'm feeling, because I get in my head, right? And, you know, I get all turbulent. I just go back and connect with that. And it connects me. And I just feel my airplane riding. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and, and there's knowing... so much turbulence going on in our world yes. right now. Yes. Turbulence politically, turbulence with the health stuff going on. And I don't know about you, but life happens. And so it's not all perfect. So there's, there's, there's struggle. It's just part of the human experience. But I don't have to get caught up in it anymore. 
I can be solid and I can be sturdy and I can be balanced mm -hmm. in, in spite of all of that. Yeah, it is, it is powerful. <laughs> Thank you for it. So I had to laugh. Beth, um, thanks, dear. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Beth was, she and I were communicating <coughs> and uh, she said something about, well, I was going to, um, that she was told that, that Jan well, Janice is going to get a little more information about that about the ascension orb and about the geological features. So when I got to church today, I said, oh, and I'm going to talk about the geological features today. She said, oh my gosh, that's what I just got. So we've got a lot of commonality there. Klutz. So what I want to chat with you about, speaking of geological features, several years ago, <coughs> excuse me, and I think it was probably 2013, maybe earlier than that, uh, I had a uh, vision of the geological features here in the, within the Pacific Northwest that have energetic structure and energetic. Do you remember that? Yeah. It's been a while, right? So um, unfortunately, I lost almost all of my notes on that. So a lot of it's going to have to be regifted to me, which is a good thing that they can regift things. <coughs> Excuse me, got tickle. <coughs> Water fill, if you would please. So, <clears throat> uh, I was re was laying in bed last night and going, okay, I don't know if I'm going to go to church tomorrow or not. If I don't, then we were going to run a couple of videos. Um, but lo and behold, here I am. So I said, well, just in case I get to go to church tomorrow, and just in case I have a voice and we can talk, um, I would really like some information. <laughs> Huge download. So the download. <clears throat> that I got was again this geological features and how they are affecting us and how they will assist this ascension orb which is just the coolest thing ever um he's bringing water Your orb is off kilter, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> so as they were starting to show me that information and remind me of that information, <clears throat> um, there are the, th the th is it, there's a triangle of three energies that we want to talk about. <clears throat> uh, the first one is, uh, I think it's that way. I'm directionally impaired, so I think it's that way. It's a confluence of the uh, Columbia River and the Snake River, and it's about, what, two miles from here? Is that about right? And where those two rivers meet. And they're all about power, and the Snake River is about the power of choice. Do you want to go this way? You, want, you can go with this, or you can go with that. So it's about the power and the power of choice and the blending of ideas. Okay, so that's the energy of that. Then there's Rattlesnake Mountain, which I think is that way, right? That way? that way. And around here, uh, Rattlesnake Mountain is just this beautiful wrinkle in, our, in the crust of the earth. And it is energetically a, a generator. So you, if you look at the, the wrinkle, it's up like this. And then the face of, of Rattlesnake is kind of sloped. So it generates energy. Whatever energy you run up at is amplified back down. It's amplified back down and hits the rivers and then amplifies the power and the power of choice. Then the third geological feature is Gable Mountain. And that one is that way. Now Gable Mountain is this big chunk of granite, right? Is it granite? Um, basalt, sorry, basalt. And it's kind of a big chunk, but it's got a plateau uh, on part of it. And this plateau represents energetically the meeting this creation point between heaven and earth, the creation point between God and man, the creation point between all that is, that which is divine, and this physical realm. And so whatever we put on Gable Mountain with our intent and our awareness, whatever is in our mind and our heart simultaneously with our, with our conscious awareness, whatever we put there is then run up uh, Rattlesnake Mountain, and then 
accelerated down to the confluence. So this grants us the ability to amplify whatever our intent is to create this creation. Now, as I was being shown Gable Mountain, I heard, um, put your fears up there. And let them go. Because we don't want those amplified. But this is the meeting of the, of the heavenly realms and the, and the physical realms, the ethereal realms, and the divine realms, and the physical thing. So put your, your concerns about this physical life, put them on there, and then let them go. And I said, oh, OK, because I, you know, Sedona Method. Beth mentioned that. Then I got this beautiful insight of what letting go looks like. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time letting go. Am I the only one? Here's what they showed me. They showed me going to work or having a task, a list of tasks on my, on my agenda and all these things I had to do. And then I was given the afternoon off. Those tasks were already completed by somebody else or they no longer were necessary. And I had the afternoon off. I could choose to do whatever I wanted from there. Ding dong. Hello. I love it when they kind of chime in. So whatever your concern is, if you've got a health concern, put it on Gable Mountain and let go. Now what that means for me is when I saw that I had the afternoon off and I could do whatever I wanted to do, what they showed me was being out in my own backyard because I have a Phil and I have been working on this backyard for years. And it's just this little slice of heaven and sun shining and the, it was warm and the birds singing. It was just beautiful. No responsibility, no obligation, no heaviness of, I've got to get it fixed. I just could let it go. It's not my job to do. If you put a fear on Gable Mountain, it's not your job to do. Certainly be prudent. You know, if you're afraid of the coronavirus, be prudent. Sanitize up, <coughs> for heaven's sakes. Stay out of fear. Let it go. Isolate yourself if you're afraid. Put a mask on if you need to. And let it go. Let it go. Have the, give yourself the afternoon off. God is giving you the afternoon off. Take it. Take it. Would you turn down your boss giving you the afternoon off? No. We want to take that time off. What would you do with free time? Because guess what? The energy we take when we're worried or fearful about something, our DNA shrinks, our immune system is compromised, and it's heavy. It takes energy to, to deal with that. And just imagine being free of that. Wouldn't that be lovely? You can be. The trick is letting it go, putting it up there, and knowing that it's being taken away if you release. The key is uh, releasing. Allow ourselves to let go. Say the word allow. 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 Doesn't that feel easy? Doesn't it feel wonderful? Now say the word fight. Doesn't that feel hard? Struggle. <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> allow. 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 Just allow. Allow yourself to be at peace even about things that you have no control over. Do what you can, be prudent, and allow divine source to do what divine source does. There are, are things that divine source can do for us that are beyond our comprehension. Have you ever had a miracle in your life? Yeah. There's not a single person here had nod their head. I bet you have too, right? <coughs> allow. Allow the miracle to happen. When we're struggling and fighting, that miracle can't happen. But what happens is we take a fear that's in our heart and in our minds, and we put it on a gable mountain, run it up Rattlesnake, down the Columbia River, and it's amplified. 
and we feel like we've got to make it fixed and people should have to do this. And no, let go. Have the afternoon off. Give yourself a time out from that. Allow yourself a break. Allow, you get to. So instead, let's put on Gable Mountain that which we have as a creation goal. What do you want to create? What do you want to create in your life? What do you want to do, be, have, experience? Put that on Gable Mountain. And know that when you put that on that plateau, you've taken it up and you've, you've released that. You've given yourself a time out from that. You've let go of that as well. Because there's some things that you just can't do. It's a God job. But you're doing your part. And the other part is to let God do God's part. So put it up there. What do you, what's on your mind? Think about it for a second. What's in your heart? What do, you, what do you want to create? When Beth was wanting to create that room, she had to get to the feeling of that room. I want a welcoming place. I want a life of purpose. How does that feel? That's different than I want to create the best job ever. I'm most, you know, whatever. What do you want to create? Find the energetic structure of that. You don't know? Don't have an idea what you want to create? Stop listening to your head. Start listening to your heart. Your heart knows. What do you want to create? I want to create harmonic relationships. Don't you? I want to create worthy work. Worthy things that I apply myself to. That whatever I put my energy to, it's something of value. Now, I can, I can wash dishes, and that's something of value, because I get clean dishes when I'm done. I can wash clothes, and something of value, I clean clothes to wear. Whatever you put your heart into is worthy work. There's so many people that go to work, and they hate it. It's drudgery. Stop that. Put that on Gable Mountain and let it go. Give that to God. Because if you're doing worthy work, I don't care if you're stocking shelves, because we're out of toilet paper in Costco now, so somebody's got to stock those shelves. Um, I don't know why there was a run on toilet paper for a, whatever. Um, but anyway, whether you're stocking shelves or typing up a document, you're doing something that's necessary. It's worthy work. Do it with honor and integrity. And value that. When you value that, your coworkers and the employer will value you as well. And if they don't, so what? God does. That's enough. You get a paycheck. That's all that matters, right? And whatever you do in your free time is worthy work. Allow that to feed your soul. So what would you like to create with this ascension orb? What is it in your life you want to create right now? So what's a miss? What's a miss in your life right now? Health? You want to have better health? Do you want to have better relationships? Do you want to have more fulfilling work? Do you want to have uh, something new to study? Do you want to have, um, I don't know, help me here. What else? What else could we want? What else could our hearts desire? Travel. Travel. Want to have an adventure? Feel it. Feel the feeling of adventure. Because you know sometimes going to the grocery store can be an adventure. <laughs> but if you know what that feels like, that's what I'm talking about. She, Beth knew the feeling of what that welcoming room felt like. And the Ascension Orb picked up on that and drew that to her effortlessly and with, with little financial outlay. It gets to be easy. It gets to be beneficial. Um, so find that feeling and put it with that ascension, ascension orb. If you got something, just pick something. Just pick something. And bring it into your ascension orb. Now that ascension orb is, a, is connected to divine. You're connected to divine anyway. But so is this ascension orb. And it will keep you on the path and keep you enlightened and aware of the journey that you're taking for that. Now, with your intent, you don't even have to know what Gable Mountain looks like. You can imagine a rocky outcropping 
with a plateau on it. So just put that feeling on that plateau. And can you let it go and come back to your ascension orb? Know that whatever action is necessary about that will be revealed to you. You don't have to fret about it. You don't have to effort about it. You don't have to anguish about it. It will be revealed to you because it will be in harmonic with you and you are attracting that to you. Now, while you're, you've noticed that you've placed that energy up there, that feeling up there, now just imagine a cloud of light, a cloud, a sphere of light or something, light coming down and absorbing that and taking it to higher source. Can you imagine that? So God's part is going to be taken care of. God knows now what you need. You've asked for it in an energetic structure. So whatever is God's part, we can let God do God's part, right? You don't have to do God's part anymore. You don't have to try. I know that's my favorite thing. So let me fix it. Let me do it. Let me try to do it all. No. Mm -mm. That gets to be done by divine source because there's things that are outside of my, my realm of, of capability. Now, that same energy on Gable Mountain, run it up the face of Rattlesnake, down the face of Rattlesnake, into the river, down the river, and let the Snake River meet at the convergence. And you've got this triangle of energy, and you're in this, this building is in the point of that. And so all of that energy now is working in your behalf to bless you and guide you in fulfillment of that, in the creation of that. So now when you are met with choice, you can go with this or you can go with that, you'll have a sense of what's right for you. And you can let everything else just flow on down the stream. No need to, no need to stress or fret about that. Give yourself the afternoon off and know that whatever comes up is what's coming up and that's at the right time, at the right place, just as you need it with divine intervention. How beautiful is that? Now just sit with that for a minute. I want to share with you something from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, let everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and burst against that house, yet it did not fall, for it had been founded upon the rock. We have these geological features here. We have the rock of our faith. We can be fearless, not stupid, not careless, but we can be fearless and fulfilled. So just be with that for a moment. Mr. Phil, if you would help me up front. I'm going to let you. Oh, yes. We're going to practice safe communion again. So if you would sanitize and pass it on. I'll let you hold it and I'll just pray over here. Join me in prayer, please. Loving spirit of light. Oh, gosh, golly, thank you for bringing us this afternoon off. Thank you for releasing us from worry and fear and stress. Thank you for creating within us this creation energy. Help us to walk in faith. 
and walk in joy. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Gosh golly, God. Gosh golly, God. Blessings. That's wiser. I don't want to put any breath breathing on it. Join me in prayer again, please. <clears throat> Loving spirit of light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life, all of it, and help us to find grace and joy in all of it. Walk with us in all things. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we called the uh, United Healthcare Nurse Line Blessings. yesterday morning to talk to him about. Honey, you don't have a microphone. He might have been. That's okay. So she might have been contagious and could have picked up Just because it's a whole I'm not contagious, is what he said. And you're playing it safe being at home. So even if you do choose to stay at home, video people, you can still participate in the contribution by clicking the link. <laughs> Should be sanitized. It's not on. It's not on, Phil. Good morning, everyone. It's been such a pleasure getting to know all of you, and I love you all, and I love coming to church. So please contribute to keeping it going as it should. Thank you. Don't touch your vape. <laughs> oh, that is the hardest thing. Well, it, it is. And in fact, I was going to clarify. We haven't talked at all about, you know, the, the ways that viruses in general spread. And the only time they're airborne is when people either sneeze or cough. And yeah, that's something that you might want to be a little careful of. And that's exactly why you don't do this or... You know, you, you don't touch your face. Did anyone see this week, and I don't remember if it was, she was from the CDC or Health and Human Services. Yes. Yeah, and she's talking about this and then just licks her finger and goes to the next page. Yeah. Really? <laughs> really? And nobody called her on it and she didn't recognize it. And that's because we do that kind of stuff all the time yeah. and we're just not cognizant of it. So be aware. Be aware. Sanitize. Sanitize fingers. You can do it with sanitized fingers. Sanitize fingers. Sanitize fingers. So, do whatever you want with them. No, you can't. <laughs> so um, we ended a little early. I expected that guided meditation using the... Uh, geological construct to take a little longer than it did. So either we can leave early or we can do a really quick meditation. What do you want? Want to go home early? Meditation? Save, 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 yeah, save. I am about out of it here. Um, so anyone have, want to comment on what their experience of that ascension orb was? You guys leaving? See you later. It's so good to see you, Alexis. Oh my gosh, you're like all grown up. Love you. <laughs> air hugs. We do air hugs here. Don't forget to come and get some signs. Don't forget your signs. Okay, okay. can I tell a story about Alexis and she's just leaving? Yes, we're going to tell a story on you, Alexis. Okay. When, when she was born, uh, <laughs> she would come to the, uh, to the first, sec our second building in downtown Kennewick, and she would come in, come in one of those carriers. 
and our cat at the time when she got out of the carrier would get in the carrier. <laughs> so we ended up buying uh, our, our cat at the time its own carrier <laughs> so that he could sleep in that when, he, when, when she wasn't around. So one day, of course, um, he went to her carrier and she went to his. <laughs> yeah, they were in each other's beds. It was really cute. It was cute. So let's, any, any other comments about your ascension process here? Oh, bulbs in the back, plants ready to go. Yep, cool. Ready, so Ooh, anybody need any bulbs? You're welcome to do that. Lilies. Lilies. And what what are those bulbs? Lilies. Lilies. Not light bulbs. Not light bulbs. <laughs> Lily bulbs. <laughs> Lily bulbs. Any comments or questions about today's thing? Yes, Beth. Well, the only other thing I just will add when I after I microphone. So the energy was felt. It energy was felt. So for the and people really online. About the idea now of and I think, I think the geological features here, I think this was that spiral that you were getting, is connecting Gable Mountain, Rattlesnake Mountain, and the, and the confluence. That was kind of spiraling that energy out. And It was a gathering place for five tribes here at the confluence. So, so there's a lot of sacredness for the Native Americans with that. Yeah, those the Native Americans knew the sacred things. They could sense them uh, in ways. Rattlesnake Mountain is sacred to them. I don't know if they're Gable Mountain. Gable Mountain is also. Gable Mountain was one of the places that the young Native men had to go to find out what their purpose in life was. The little Oh, tour. Okay, and I was blessed six years ago to drive the bus on top of Rattlesnake Mountain and see the Native Americans in the Rattlesnake Mountain. Wow. Four visits, you guys. They're in Gable Mountain. Wow. There is nothing that looks more gorgeous than Gable Mountain. No, you can't go to Rattlesnake Mountain. They opened it up. They did a lottery system to go see the wildflowers. But that is all Native American. And you can feel, you can feel the ancient ones. On you can top of feel that. The mountain, you guys. Yes. It is amazing. I can feel it just looking at Rattlesnake Mountain. And to recap that for the camera, just in case they didn't hear everything that you said, that, that in the, in the um, Native cultures, Native tribes that are local here, uh, the young men who went to go find their purpose uh, would go to Gable Mountain. That's, they went to the top of Gable Mountain to that plateau we were just talking about to find their purpose. So it's interesting that we we're getting that energy incorporated in here as well. And the sacredness of Rattlesnake Mountain is sacred to the Native Americans as well. So big stuff here, people. This is not just me blowing out my ear. So big stuff. <laughs> Yes, everything. I just want you to know that. Absolutely. Very sacred. Very sacred, powerful stuff. So power up. That was the title of our message today is power up. We've got the power. 